Thanks, John. Now, on PM, we've been trying to keep up with some of the arguments around gender, sex and treatment of trans people this year, arguments which can be quite fraught, arguments that often focus on differences of philosophy, uh, but also on practical questions. Now, among them is whether young people who feel they've been born with the wrong body should be given hormones or other treatments. The clinic that handled cases of gender dysphoria in the UK, the Tavistock, has been criticised for prescribing too readily and is being wound up, its services dispersed. Well, on PM, we've been trying to offer different accounts of trans life and experience, and we're going to bring you one now, a satisfied customer of the Tavistock Clinic, because I spoke to Alex, a trans man, 25, born female, and his parents, Andrew and Anne. We have used fake names, I should say. Now, Alex came out to his parents at age 14 and was taken to the Tavistock. He transitioned with help from the Tavistock, and both of his parents are supportive of him and his decision. And I started by asking Alex about his experience at the clinic. My experience at the Tavistock is I was offered counselling. You know, they really did want to check that I definitely was feeling this way and that it wasn't something that maybe in the future I would want to go back on or I would change my mind. And there was a lot of like in-depth counselling and like talking about how I feel and how long I felt this and the indications of why I felt this way before any sort of hormones were prescribed. I remember like being in a hospital in London and having all of these tests done just to make sure that I was healthy enough. This wasn't going to backfire in terms of my physical health or my mental health. What age were you when you first had hormones prescribed? 16. 16. And let's be clear, you're not feeling any regret? No regrets? No, not so ever. I feel like going on hormones, quite frankly, saved my life. Like, I think, you know, I really wasn't very happy before then. But being able to have that amazing opportunity to, like, kickstart my life, like, it was amazing. Tell me about school then, Alex, because obviously... You're representing yourself, rebranding yourself to some extent among your your peer group. How, how was that? It was challenging for sure. I sort of decided to just go head first into the transition. Every sort of form in my year were read a notice that said, hey, he would like to be called Alex now and he, he would like to be called he and him. It was, you know, it was difficult. It was very, you know, I had a lot of anxiety around it, but I, everyone was actually really nice about it. I think I'd been thinking about the worst and I think everyone had maybe thought that I was gay or something anyway. So maybe they were just like, oh, OK, like, no big deal. Alex, some people think it's become quite fashionable in schools for kids to become trans. And, and they're, they're all, some of those who worry about the number of female to male transitioners is that there's a social pressure or a sort of a social fashion. And they say it's a it's a social contagion. Talk through whether that was the case at your school. I think I was actually the first transgender student my school had ever had dealt with. I thought they were learning as well, and they were learning with, like what was going on and how to deal with it. But um, I still do occasionally get like messages from younger students from that school that maybe had heard of me and just wanted to like ask for some advice. I'm not sure I would say it was fashionable. Maybe we're just living in a, a time that like people are feeling a bit more comfortable in terms of, like, coming out and feeling like they'd be accepted. Yeah. And you, you obviously had to talk this through with friends and others, explain what's going on in your family. How, how was that for you, the, the, the social acceptance, if you like? Everyone was, was, was great. I mean, you know, I had to tell my elderly relatives that uh, my daughter was now Alex, and they just accepted it like that. The whole family was so supportive, my friends were supportive. There wasn't sort of one person that really sort of questioned it. Everyone was fantastic, which obviously helped. I had to make phone calls to doctors, psychiatrists, you know, and it, it wasn't easy. I'm not the most confident of person, but, you know, it made me into a stronger person myself going through this with Alex. Yeah. Were there any low points or high points, Andrew, in this, in this journey? It's, it's, it's a major project, really, for a family. Did you have any high points or low points? Well, we just tried to keep it on a level so that uh, we could support Alex, really. Once you get your head around the fact that, you you know, there is going to be a transition, there is going to be a change, you just go along with it. it it's Alex's decision. 
and that, that's final. You know, there's, there's no point anybody trying to talk him around um, because it's not a matter of being talked around. It is something within Oli. So the, the high points and low points were they were ironed out by the keeping the, the level that we're at and seeing the change in Alex, such a positive change. You could see the smile on his face a lot more. And it's just little things like that that are the high points. The fact that he could talk about it as well. He could never never talk about it before. We were all in a position where we'd seen things happen at school, you know, alienation, troubles with studying. But, it, you know, after the journey that he's gone through, it's actually turned out, you know, what a fantastic guy. Yeah. Obviously, um, Andrew, no one wants to misgender someone who is trans and insult them by misgendering them. But, I, you know, if, you, if you've had a daughter for 14 years, it must be difficult for you not to be getting confused or misgendering or slipping into the old vernacular when you should be using the new, no? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the amount of times I used to call Alex by his old name, and it was just um, a, a force of nature. You just look around, see your child there, and just recollect the last name. You know, it's, it does take a, a bit of work around the mind just to get used to saying the words. But that's all it is. It's just, it's just words. Yeah. Alex, talk to us about how how people accept you now. You're now in your mid-twenties. You've obviously been through all of this. You're now living a comfortable life. You've clearly got no regrets at all. Talk us through how life is and and how how people accept you. Do they think of you as Alex Mann? Do they think of Alex Trans? Or how do you feel people accept you? Well, um, actually, I sort of choose to live not openly trans. I feel like being trans is very much a spectrum. It's all about um, maybe how comfortable you feel um, with other people knowing that you're trans. For me, I very much just relate more to being a man rather than a transgender man. So I choose to not live openly as trans, but also like, obviously, I'm okay participating in stuff like this because that is an experience I have gone through. What do you think of the way the debate has gone? I mean, a lot of people worrying that it's 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 very fraught and and very strong feelings on on the gender critical side. They feel it's an attack on biological women, and then obviously very strong on the trans side, where people feel it's it's an attack on the existence and the identity of people who are trans to question to question some of the things that are going on in this area. Well, what's your feeling about it? Well, I just feel like it is, as a trans person, it is actually quite frustrating having to defend your own right to exist, your own character, just who you are as a person. Like, I, I understand that it is difficult for other people to understand how this may feel, how it may transpire, but transgender people are going to be a part of society whether or not others agree with that. Like, they have every right to live their life, to live our lives as we choose and at what makes us happy. Andrew, any looking back on this process, any advice for parents who are speaking to their teenage daughter, having that same conversation that you had with Alex those years ago, a decade ago, any advice for them? Well, you can think about, you know, what you call the, the debate on these subjects. That obviously, there is a debate, but there doesn't need to be a debate because going through the process, going through all the, the medical teams down at Tavistock, they have the process to um, sort of wean people off if it is just a fad. If people are going through what you call, you said before, where it's fashionable to be like this, if people are trying to do that, then, you know, they, they will get pointed in the right direction there. But people like Alex, who actually do suffer, well, did suffer from this, then they're sent down the right track. So it's just a matter of, you know, listening, filtering out anything that needs to be filtering out, get as much help as you can, as much help as you need. And basically, they, they guide you in the right direction, whichever your direction is. And Anne, anything you would advise? It was a hard struggle. It was a hard few years and you've just got to be strong and you've just got to be there for your child and and support as much as you can. It's all you can do. And Alex, in 10 years time, are you, I, I don't know whether you have relationships, I don't want to talk to you about your sexuality or anything, anything like that, but anatomically, you're probably somewhat different to a, someone born male, but do you just find you can live a very ordinary life? You don't have to worry about it anymore? No, it slips my mind a lot of the time. Like, um, I just sort of live my life, you know. I, 
I've had girlfriends, all of them being straight. Like once I've gone past that transition, you know, it has actually just made me able to live the life that I've always wanted to. And it's phenomenal. It's amazing. And I, I really don't have anything bad to say about <laughs> the stop helping me. It, it's certainly coming across. It's coming across. Tell us about the girlfriends, though. I, I'm interested, Alex, in the conversation you have with your girlfriend. Sorry to pry, but I, I, I am interested. <laughs> Well, it's not something I have to explain to anyone from my hometown. Everyone there does know. I came out very openly. Outside of that, it's just something that you drop in a lot of the time. I mean, that, I've never had an experience where a girl has turned around and been like, that's a problem. It's it's re- honestly never been a problem for me. Trans man, Alex and his parents, Andrew and Anne.